Hello everybody, welcome to Talk About House Sometime. I'm Juana. Uh, this video should be awesome because we just did a complete practice of it. Okay, so... Because of a technical... So somebody, who shall remain nameless, um, you know, didn't press the button properly, but our, it's all good. Our filming director has just been fired. Yes. Yeah, okay, getting, so right. this video, focus, right? Focus. Uh, okay. Why home prices are rising, right? Why are they still going up? Okay, so... We have some talk. data that shows why this is happening. An awesome chart that's, that you'll really love. The great thing about this chart is no matter where you is, you'll be able to get information out because it's about the whole country. Okay, right. here's the article. Uh, Redfin Home Price Index. Price growth slowed for third straight month in November as supply crunch eased. Price growth slowed. Does that mean home prices went down? No, it just means that they didn't go up quite as quickly, but they still went up, which is surprising, right? Because what do we always say? The home prices tend to go down in the fall because the best time to buy a house is... October, November, December, January, because home mm -hmm. prices tend to go down. But that's not what happened. How much did they go up? Okay, here we go. This is from the article. From Redfin's data, U.S. home prices rose 0.6% from a month earlier. Okay. The smallest increase since June is a jump for ho in homes for sale gave buyers more options. That's according to the Redfin Home Price Index, which is similar to but more current than Case Schiller Index. So home the number of available homes went up, but then more home prices went up. One up 0.6%. People are like, oh, that's not very much. How much is that if home prices went up every month for 0.6%? So let me put it in, in better terms than okay. that. So if you have a $500,000 home, your home went up $3,000 in a month. If you are paying rent in that $500,000 home, you got didn't get $3,000 of equity, right? No. <laughs> But that's, that's kind of what happened to somebody who owned that house. Your landlord did. Your landlord did. And you that's paid right. his mortgage. That's right. Uh, so, look, I mean, $3,000 a month is, is a pretty sweet appreciation. You know, on an annual basis, that's what, like 7%? 7 7.2%. 7 7, yeah. Now, that's here's, pretty good. Here's what's really shocking, Juana. Yes. Home prices, do they are they normally skyrocketing between October and November? No, what they're they, not. What are they normally doing? They're either declining or at least holding their own, but that's not what's happening. And what's interesting is that home prices went up even though interest rates were 8%. Okay, so let's talk about that. There's this lag effect in real estate. Mm -hmm. So interest rates right now are, I've got a chart. Let me throw the chart up. Okay, this is the going interest rate. I love how excited it gets over the charts. As of today. <laughs> okay, I spent all day making this darn chart. Okay. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Now, this is your average run-of-the-mill mortgage. Mm -hmm. This is a Freddie. It's probably the most expensive mortgage you can get for an average person. 6.67%. Now, remember, we were, we were 8% eight weeks ago. We had eight weeks ago of declines, which meant in October, mm -hmm. mortgage rates peaked. Right. Okay. Now, 15-year fixed today is 5.95%. Mm -hmm. Now, the homes that go under contract this month in December, in January, we'll see that data. Mm -hmm. Just like we can't see the December, uh, the no uh, yeah. that we, we were looking at November data, but in December, we'll look at January data and January or February, we'll look at January data. Right. So, and, and, you know, not everybody puts out their data at the same time. So for example, like Redfin puts it out earlier than, um, th th than Fred does and, and that sort of thing. So, so we do try to find um, consistent sources for you so you can compare things yeah. uh, easier. Well, what's amazing, Juana, is that home prices were 8% mm -hmm. in not October. Home. Interest no, rates. I'm sorry. Interest rates were 8% mm -hmm. in October. But the, but still enough, there was enough demand to push home prices up. Because it we didn't we didn't measure it till remember they go under contract in October, the people who locked their loans, and then in November they close, and that's when we record the price. Mm -hmm. So home home uh, interest rates, mortgage rates are falling. I mean it's likely home prices could be even higher. Mm -hmm. Here's another quote from the article. US home price growth slowed for the third straight month in November. As jump jump as a jump in new listings cooled home buying competition. Mm -hmm. Home prices were up 0.6 percent for October, the smallest monthly increase since June, which is normal, right? Home prices don't continue to skyrocket, but they were up 6.4 percent from a year earlier. Right. This whole last year, interest rates have not been below six; they've been between six and eight mm percent. -hmm. Uh, isn't that unusual that home prices can still go up six point six point four percent? Is probably more than any year between 2011 and 2000. 19 probably so I mean that's a good bit of a good bit of equity that um, that owners are building 
And I know that some of you are looking at, yeah, but you know, back in, you know, 2020, 2021, you know, home prices were going up, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, well, you know, we were all younger back then too. So lots of things happened back then. But this is what we're working with now. We're working with continued home, home prices going up more than they do on average. And, you know, this is in spite of higher interest rates. So putting all this in context, what do you think is going to happen in the spring? Yeah, could you imagine interest if interest rates keep falling and we have 1911. 1911. Could you imagine her, your watch is talking? Okay, could you imagine in night in uh, 1911? <laughs> could you 1911 was a long time ago. Could you imagine in the spring if interest if the 30 year fixed goes below 6 and the 50, okay. 15 year is in the low 5? So I've said this before, it's going to be pandemonium. Okay. So I mean, what I'm expecting at this point, with with interest rates on this on their current trajectory, and with inventory not increasing substantially, you know, what I'm expecting is a very robust and um, energetic spring. And what I mean by that is a lot more transactions than we've seen over the last year. Uh, I expect to have a lot more buyer competition. That means multiple offers. It means um, having to pay more than asking price. It means having to pay more than appraised value. So all of these things I expect to happen this spring. Now, you know, what's that going to do to home price in the spring? I think that they're going to go way up and it's going to be a, a painful spring for buyers. What are they going to look like when you look at the totality of 2024? I, you know, I don't, I'm not expecting that the pace of the spring is going to carry throughout the year. Here's a quote that really caught my eye. Okay. In Chicago, home prices rose 2.4% month over month. It's about a 27, 28%. Right. Right. It's pretty high. Annual. The largest increase among the 50 most populous metros. Rounding out the top five are Newark, New Jersey, New York, Pittsburgh, and Las Vegas. Las Vegas. We were, the, we were number five. 1.3%. Mm -hmm. um, that's like 15% a year annualized. Right. And this is a slow year, so I'm not saying home prices go up 15 percent, but if they went up to 1.3 percent in the fall, and with interest super high interest rates, if we don't get some inventory, we will. We'll you think we will? Yeah. Now. Yeah. So not, we're not suggesting that home prices for Vegas are up 15 percent for 2023. So please don't, don't don't go down that road. Okay. We're just we're just looking at what's happened over a month. And then when we look at the totality of the year, it's going to be obviously a substantially different number. Now, here is the chart that prompted us to do this video, and that is why the numbers are the way they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this chart is the change in inventory. Now, if you look at the index in the bottom right, the, it, the legend, it tells you what different colors is the change in inventory. So everything that's blue meant that the same time, November of last year, there's more homes available. Now, a lot of these blues aren't really high, like Colorado, 1.6%, basically the same. Um, New Mexico, 0. 0. I think it's 0.6%, Texas, 12%, Florida, 22%. Now, you're probably like, oh my God, 22%, that's crazy. Yeah, but remember, they had artificially super low. If you look at Florida, their level of inventory is still substantially less than pre-pandemic, right? But what's interesting is look at all the orange and red, and then remember the cities. Chicago, Newark, New York, Pittsburgh, and Vegas. They're all in areas where there's a lot less inventory. Mm -hmm. So in Nevada, is, we're 43% less. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the whole for the whole state. We know from our market updates that we do, that we have the exact data for Vegas, it's actually less than half. It's mm -hmm. over 50%. And um, so this really want to reinforce is that it's the inventory. Mm -hmm. It's not interest rates that are driving the home prices because right. this belief that as soon as interest rates went up, home prices would crash 40, 50%. Now, if you'd listen to the doomers, we would have had in the last three years, eight recessions and five housing crashes. It would have already happened. Well, um, and instead we've had zero recessions and housing has actually been very resilient. Uh, we've we had a huge housing value boom over the pandemic and then post pandemic uh, the market's been very resilient and uh, home prices have gone up not in every market but in in most markets uh, out of the 50 large metros that uh, that are being tracked okay
we have the record low since being measured unemployment, the lowest right. it's ever been. And then we know, look, it, while we have local, uh, record low unemployment, you know, some people were talking, well, yeah, but you have lower participation rate, not so fast. The participation rate has gone up. Yeah, we have the lowest number, we have the highest wage growth ever. Mm -hmm. We have the lowest number of seriously delinquent mortgages mm -hmm. since they started measuring, mm -hmm. the lowest ever. We have the lowest number of home sitting vacant that we've ever had. We have the largest deficit of homes of, uh, available for purchase and the largest deficit of homes needed, meaning what, how many homes we need and how many homes we should have. Literally every single metric points to this thing called shortage. What does shortage mean? It means less supply than demand. Less supply than demand. Okay. And then when, when supply and demand don't meet, uh, then they have to reach e equilibrium. Right. That's where price comes from. Price okay. is just the equilibrium result of um, a shortage or a um, an uh, overage. Right. Right. Or right. surplus. The surplus is the economic term. Okay. So I want to show this chart now. The Redfin Home Price Index. Now, one, how is the index different from median? Because that this is indexed home prices versus median. What's the difference? Right. So with an index, uh, they're they're looking at the totality of it rather than picking out that that middle number. Okay. Right. So it's so it, it it adjusts in a different way so that you can look, you can better see a trend and it, it smooths out that the whole um, the, the the whole metric. In a perfect world, in, if if you have ten sales in year say eleven, <laughs> eleven sales in year A and eleven sales in year B. You take you start the top and go down to number six. You have five above it and five below it. That's the median. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is if you happen to if if they in if in a community, if a home builder comes in and builds these really small houses and people buy them, you now have extra sales at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the the median is lower number. Mm -hmm. In a perfect world, index home prices. Let's say a home sells in year, you know. 2022 and that same home transacts people sell it a year later you have a more better idea of what home values are doing because you have the same house now selling to a different person not taking into account improvements or whatever we're not talking about flips we're talking about you know so index indexing gives you a better idea it also gives you a smoother price because it because remember the real estate market is, does not turn like the stock market or crypto it doesn't jump around well this is what's interesting about this redfin home price index Home prices you can see go up, you know, four percent a year, all the way up to twenty twenty, and then as the economy started to sort of wane, mm -hmm. right, because of COVID and job losses. Now remember here, we had seventeen percent unemployment nationally, and look what happened to home prices started taking off. Why? Because interest rates are low, and home builders start backing off building, and next thing you know, is everyone flooded in the market with low interest rates to buy, and for the two years interest rates are low, home prices skyrocketed. Now you see it went back to the normal rate. Of climb. The difference is we now have, we've had six to eight percent interest rates for the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. And look at that. So my question to you is, Juana, the Fed is done with all of its raising. They've already said this. We're going to have rate cuts next year and the year after, most likely. And I think interest rates are going to tank again. I mean, I think I I would I think two weeks ago I said I, I would be shocked if they went below. Six percent. I would not be shocked if we're seeing stuff in the fives by the end of 2024. Interest rate, thirty-year fix, Freddie. That any person could go get a five point, you know, eight percent interest. Right. I think I think that's that's a possibility. It'll be interesting to see what uh, the inflation numbers are like uh, when we go to January, because I think that's still uh, something that the Fed is watching closely and concerned about. I think the Fed has stopped raising interest rates. Uh, and is, is taking a wait and see attitude. I appreciate their patience. I appreciate uh, their intelligence and understanding that the economy is uh, is large and it takes a while for everything that has been done, all the, all the inflationary measures that have been taken for them to uh, take effect in the economy. I think that there's a concern that consumers are kind of um, running out of steam because of the interest rate uh, because of the interest rates on credit cards and, and consumer debt in general, and because um, 
I think um, the numbers show that people uh, are kind of tapped out as far as uh, that sort of credit. So I think uh, the Fed's going to take a wait-and-see wait attitude. However, the market has decided <laughs> that the Fed is done with interest rates. And even if the, um, even if the Fed doesn't lower interest rates, it's possible that uh, mortgage rates will continue to decline. Uh, because remember, we, we've talked about this before. When you looked at what the Fed rate was and what mortgage rates were at, there was a disparity uh, versus what you normally have. So I think interest rates, mortgage interest rates are coming down to meet that, that, that benchmark. So there's, there's wiggle room in there, even though the Fed has not lowered rates. I think that the Fed will lower rates. It'll probably be in February. I'm sorry, in, in March. Okay. I don't think it'll be as early as February. I think it's probably going to be in March. Um, and but I think it's going to be very slight. I think it's going to be very uh, sporadic. I don't think that they're going to lower interest rates every month. I think they're going to maybe lower interest rates in March and kind of see what happens. Kind of take a wait, wait and see attitude. Um, so. All of this just means that in, that the mortgage rates will continue to go down because that will signal to the market that the Fed is not going to increase interest rates. So they're going to come, so the mortgage rates will come closer to meeting the, the Fed uh, lending rate. The idea that the most homes they've ever sold was actually in November, that lets you know kind of what to expect for the spring. A lot of activity, which is what I've been saying. And if more inventory doesn't come on the market, these people are just going to push up prices. They're right. going to be like, look, I want a house. Well, there's five offers. Okay, fine. I'll offer more because I have a 5.3% or 5.6% VA loan, and I'm just gonna I'll just take it because right. I don't want to wait a year. And I think we're gonna get in this thing where you know, 2020, 21, 22, every 23, every year we were told prices are come down. Just wait. There we just wait, and you know they're not coming down. And we're I'm we're normally above average pessimistic, but the data we've seen. We have got a video coming out tomorrow that's has a ton of information that shows 2024 is likely to be a barn burner of the year. There we go. And I'm, yeah, way better in 2023. Okay. Do you have any more charts? No. Okay. He's done. So yes. please uh, show Todd some love for his charts. Uh, if you are not subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Please love the video. Did, did I say like? No, I said love the video. Okay. Yeah, love, it. <laughs> love the video. Uh, leave us your real estate related comments. Uh, if you don't agree with us, that's totally fine. Just make sure that you substantiate your disagreement with data. We appreciate your data. If you're in a different market, please tell us what's happening in your market. We appreciate you watching. Please help us get to 100,000 100, uh, subscribers. That's Todd's new goal. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that he has a deadline for that, so let's not give him the opportunity to give us a deadline. Let's just work toward that so we, we can get there and then we don't have to hear about it anymore. So we appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.